I wanted to make a fun, silly video on ranking weapons by their ability to block bullets. Instead, I stumbled upon probably the weirdest, glitchiest, and most inconsistent mechanic in five years of playing around with the game. In the past few days in CSGO, I've managed to shoot myself, trick the game into thinking the air is actually a weapon, in which case the bullet is stopped in mid-air, and influence the path of a bullet based on the objects around a gun. No exaggeration. Everything in this video relies on SV Show Impacts Penetration, so we do have to understand how that works before we go any further. Show Impacts is pretty routine at this point. Shoot. Red is Client Bullet. No counts. Blue is Server Bullet. Counts. Understand? Good. Now, as soon as we turn on the Penetration setting in Shoot, it gets a bit complicated. There's still the two big cubes, which I'll call the Impact Cubes. This time, they have some fancy text around them, which includes the type of the material the bullet hit and will travel through, the distance traveled in the air before hitting the surface, and the bullet's damage. Next, this line is the path of the bullet as it goes through the material. Finally, when the bullet exits, there's what I affectionately call the baby cube, which represents where the bullet left the object, along with the distance it traveled inside the material, the damage lost, and the material the bullet is hitting while exiting. Understand? Now it's time to not understand. When you decide to shoot a wall instead of a weapon, like any normal person, you'll see one impact cube per material. Like, if I shoot these two boxes on dust, you'll see one cube for box 1 and one cube for box 2. Makes sense. However, when shooting a weapon, you'll see between 1 and 3 impacts depending on a ton of factors, some of which I still don't know. Guess which number is the most common? 1? Nah, that makes sense. It's actually 2. The first impact will always be here, and if there's a second, it will be at the end of the gun. Weird, right? If there's a third, it'll actually be somewhere in between. The one in the front is the easiest to understand. When the bullet hits the weapon, it impacts the weapon. Shocker. But the others are a bit trickier. It's really strange in the first place for there to be more impacts, since this is basically saying the bullet re-penetrates the gun in the middle of the weapon. This impact can be figured out by looking at the material the impact is made of. At first, it just seems like weapon, the material for all guns, but you can see some weird overlap here. There's actually a word behind the weapon. It's flesh. Flesh from the shooter. It turns out that if you're shooting a weapon that's inside your bounding box, once the bullet leaves this box, the game thinks it's leaving the material it entered. However, the game instantly realizes the bullet is still in the weapon, and it impacts the gun yet again in the same space. So, the flesh text is from the baby cube here, while the weapon text you can clearly see is from the big cube. This actually has huge implications, since the bullet loses additional damage on re-entry, which means a bullet will do less damage to someone on the receiving end if the bullet is close enough to be within the shooter's bounding box, which is probably pretty common considering the weapon becomes a larger target the closer it is to the shooter. The last impact is by far the weirdest. There isn't one set behavior here, but there is a general idea. The bullet will reach the end of the gun here and try to leave it like normal. Sometimes this does happen. However, most of the time, the bullet will, for some insane reason, re-enter the gun and do one of three things. It will either leave the gun a little distance after, like in this case, it could be instantly stopped here, which makes zero sense, or it will continue to travel through weapon material, as shown by this line before eventually stopping. These last two are super weird. Since the damage lost from this tiny fraction of a weapon shouldn't be enough to stop the bullet when considering the damage going in. Additionally, you'd expect to see stopped text that shows where the material slowed the bullet to a halt, like when shooting through a thick wall. The third case is also kind of insane, considering this line shows that the bullet is still traveling through material even though it's clearly in the air. The game actually thinks it's still traveling through weapon until it eventually stops in midair. These interactions create really weird situations where you can easily shoot through one side of a P90, but if you go on the exact opposite side and angle, the bullet is stopped dead in its tracks due to the weird weapon air bug. This allows you to shoot through the entire length of a weapon, but have trouble getting through the side that's like one-fifth as long. It's really weird. You can actually get weirder cases if you wall bang weapons, where eventually the bullet will enter, get to the other side of the weapon, and have enough damage to keep going, but will stop for some reason without the stop text. The reason why the bullet re-enters here isn't exactly known, but Zul and I have different ideas on why. 
Zulul thinks there's some strange interactions with the collision mesh of the P90, as Valve decided to let this mesh be generated by computer instead of designed. However, I found I could impact weapons in places the mesh didn't cover, which makes me think the weapon uses this box you can see in the model viewer program as the hitbox. As a result, in this example, the game detects the bullet leaving the weapon here, but some other check makes the bullet re-enter. I think it has to do with the render box of the weapon, but my evidence is kinda faulty. When you use R draw render boxes one to show, you guessed it, the weapon's render box, you can see the second cube is right here at the very edge of the render box, perfectly centered on the edge of the box. It seems way too good to be a coincidence, but on the sides of the same P90, the cubes don't exactly align with the edge, and on weapons like the op with huge differences with both boxes, this obviously doesn't happen. The big question then at this point is what determines the behavior of the bullet in this last impact? While I've had a pretty good idea about all the previous stuff talked about, there's so much strange behavior here that I just have no clue, so I'll just give all my observations. This clip shows me consistently wall banging P90s to land in the next one. However, this last P90 is a steel wall. The only difference between this stubborn P90 and the ones behind it is the objects in front of each gun. So I decided to put a wall in front of the same weapon, just shifted to the right, and sure enough, when you shoot through this gun, the bullet somehow travels through. Based off this, it seems like the object in front of a gun can determine if the bullet will continue the travel through a past weapon. CSGO quantum mechanics. Not really, but it's the best word to describe this behavior to me. When you zoom in on this weapon, you'll notice that the line that signifies the bullet is traveling through bullet air never ends at a blue cube, which means it continues to travel through the same bullet air material as this gun, but for some reason decides to travel farther just because there's another wall in front of the bullet. I have a separate example of this here, where I shoot through this P90 with a bot in the way, and one where it, um, disappears. When looking at the end, we can see that both bullets do travel through bullet air, but the bullet that travels through the bot goes way further without any justifiable reason. The only explanation I can come up with is, somehow, the material behind a gun can affect how the bullet will travel, despite never actually being penetrated by the bullet according to the show Impex command. But it gets weirder. Later, I simply just moved the map in Hammer, and suddenly, this stubborn P90 suddenly allowed me to shoot through it like all the other weapons. It was the same case with this gun, where I used to never get a bullet through it from the side. Then, I expanded the skybox next to it out, and could suddenly shoot through it, but when I shrank the skybox back down to its original size, I could still shoot through the same gun. Next, I made a line of P90s here and got two more new behaviors. First, there are strange angle ranges where the bullet will penetrate through. For this one, at some angle the bullet will go through, but turn slightly to the left and the gun is impenetrable again. For this gun it seems to look roughly like this, where if the bullet exits on the blue region, it will go through the weapon. However, it doesn't seem to be consistent for each gun in the line. The other strange behavior is shooting straight through the gun. For all except one of these, the bullet will behave in some way described above. But for this gun in particular, and neither the gun in front of it or behind it, it will consistently have a disagreement between the server and client. This is actually the opposite of most cases with server-client disagreements I came upon, as most of the time the client let the bullet pass while the server bullet stayed behind. As a last test, with these guns aligned horizontally, when I shot to the left, the bullets always seemed to pass through, creating that sudden stop of the bullet I described earlier. However, when shooting from the right of the gun, the bullet never got through the first weapon, as it would instantly stop. Before you ask, yes, this does happen with guns that are in the air and are moving. Zool took multiple screenshots of these exact same things happening while throwing weapons, and the entire reason why he tested this more thoroughly was due to inconsistent damage when shooting bots on Dust 2, as the damage ranged from 55 to 0 with the Deagle. The important thing to take away from this is that the damage a gun will block varies based off the amount of impacts the bullet will hit. Which means that weapons blocking bullets are possible, but the amount that it will protect you is never certain. Oh, and one last bug that ties into this. Kinsey sent me a clip of a streamer wow, Bibboboy that saw something nah, that's easy for us to explain now. Less hat er ja auch erst später angemacht, seitdem uh, unser Suspect hier mit... Was? Was indeed. Trying to shoot it yourself is fairly easy, but if you try to get closer and shoot through less concrete, the bullet gets stopped dead in its tracks. Looking at the bullet's path, we can see it enter and leave box 1, enter and leave box 2, but right here, when it should enter the ground, it doesn't, and instead travels through the ground as if it was air until this point, where the bullet suddenly freezes and goes, <gasps> Wait, 
air isn't this dense, and starts penetrating a mysterious substance called default. Do this from the opposite end, and the bullet enters a material called plaster before quickly dying off. The reason for this, and pretty much every problem in CSGO, is displacements. For some reason, the bullet abuses displacement's bugginess to allow it to pass through the ground unchecked. Then, at some point I can't figure out, it realizes it's in a material, but since no material is actually there besides just the middle of the ground, the bullet defaults to going through the material default, which is a lot nicer on bullets than concrete and dirt and plaster and stuff. As a result, you can cheat through materials with a fair bit of damage using the op if you have a solid material whether it be a solid prop or wall on top of a displacement. Sadly, having these two requirements met and still having a path to where you can expect a person is extremely unique. And this is really the only spot where I found that it's practical, but you can find many examples of this on Dust2. I know I didn't get many answers for these weird behaviors, but I felt the need to share them since they're just straight bonkers. If you think I'm lazy, which I am, I invite you to shoot static weapons for 16 hours to get closer to the answers to these extremely rare situations that no one cares about.